Hi, it's Steph. And today we are at my friend Antoinette's house. She is going to do a garden tour with us. Antoinette has a lovely small space garden with a beautiful collection of Japanese maples. So if any of that interests you, stick around. And this is my friend Antoinette. Hi Antoinette. Hi Steph. Thank you so much for having us Thank today. Thank you for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Um, your garden is beautiful. We've known each other for about three years now. We actually met on Instagram because I was starting to research Japanese maples and Antoinette has a beautiful collection and her page is called Antoinette Gardens and I will link it down below in the description of the video. So Antoinette, how long have you been gardening at this home? So I've been gardening for about almost eight years now. We moved in in 2015, the year, the, the month that we got married. And we moved in and we used all of our wedding money to rip out all these big um, shrubs they had that were U shrubs, just circle oh, shaped. Used, yes. I don't mind U's now, but back then I thought, oh, they're so ugly. I got ripped them all out. There was like a giant overgrown um, juniper over there by the driveway. We ripped that out and we just kind of started with a blank slate. All we left was this shade tree over here that you guys will see. Um, I think it's a crab apple. And then everything else we put in. So it's been about eight years. How big would you say your garden space is? So I guess compared to this neighborhood, it just seems average to me. But um, and when you walk around, you feel like I have these different areas in the garden versus just front and backyard. So it feels kind of spacious to me, but turns out it's only um, 0.26 acres. So it's not even half an acre. So it's actually quite small. Yeah, that's great. And you've packed a lot of beauty in that space. So Thank you. let's go ahead and take a look around and you can kind of just show us what you want to show us. What do you want to share with us? What do you like? And as we're going through, you can kind of let us know if there's specific plants that you like, why you like them. And if there's anything, you know, obviously we all have regrets in the garden. And at some point, if you have any of those that you want to share, you know, sure. feel free to throw those in. So we'll start here, Antoinette, with okay. these beautiful maples that you have lining this sure. walkway. So this area gets morning sun. And this is uh, Moonrise, one of my favorite maples. I love how the new growth, it's like reddish orange, it changes. Um, this ground cover here is called Lamian. It started off with just like a tiny little pot. Um, and the rabbits don't touch this one. Oh, that's good. Is but that it, your biggest garden pest, rabbits? Yes, rabbits just are the worst for me. They're, yeah, I, I deal more with deer. This is one of my favorite uh, heucheras. I don't know, remember the name of that one, but it's very cool. It almost looks like a native type. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I always call it the brain. I'm not sure why, but it reminds me of a brain. I don't know oh, why. Yeah, the veining on it, I don't maybe. Know. And this is Dancing Peacock, this Japanese maple. It has excellent fall color and really large leaves. It's going to stay pretty narrow. This one has these amazing um, flowers that you guys just missed for the spring. I call them earrings, but they hang low and they're like really clustered. This is a great one for the spring and fall. And this is Orium. Orium is probably one of my favorite Japanese maples. I love it so much that I have three. The color is just always so bright, always a pop of color. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. What is it? Manyo no Seito. Oh. Pretty cool. What first interested you in Japanese maples? So when I used to rent a house, um, actually no, before then, before I rented the house, I was in college and I was studying wildlife biology. And I took a botany class where we had to memorize a bunch of um, trees for the class and plants. And we had to memorize all the trees, what they look like in the winter with just by their buds. And so I had to cool. learn the difference of, you know, red maple and Norway maple, Japanese, just by their buds. And it just kind of got me interested. And when they leafed out, I thought, oh, they're pretty. Yeah, they're kind of star shaped. And then when we rented a house, I noticed little seedlings coming up in the spring in the neighborhood. And that got me um, just liking them and collecting a few for the garden. And then what really got me into them is these two YouTube videos. I don't know if you'd want to link them below, but yeah, I can. They're, it's like a couple in Ohio that has two um, videos with their backyard and their front yard. And they have all these specimen trees, trees that normally you would only buy one and then have a bunch of like plants around it. But they filled every space of the garden with these amazing like specimen plants, um, crazy maples and conifers. And oh. that video is so relaxing to me that I used to watch it like every day just like to relax. It's send like my zen. Send me the link because yes. I would love to watch them and I'll certainly link it in the description below. Okay. This one is absolutely gorgeous. All of this layering. So this one is actually to remember um, my cockatiel that passed away. It's, um, it's called Mikawa Yatsubusa. The leaves are like layered, which to me feels exactly like bird feathers. Just like the way I would like pet her little neck. Oh, I come out here to that. think about her. That hookara is gorgeous over there. That caramel hookara. Yes, I love that one. Yeah, I bought one last year. I haven't found a place for it yet, but yours is stunning. 
so it's making me excited to Thick find enough, this I keep thinking I could divide it, but it's so pretty. I don't want to mess with I it. I know. You know. Yeah. I have a tough time with hookers in my garden. I just don't think that I have the conditions that they thrive in. So I'm excited to give that one a go. Everyone says it's a good one. So we'll see. Sure, oh, and, got, and this is a really beautiful border you have here yeah, as well. Yeah, we've got an espalier apple tree over here from Home Depot. Oh, that's um, gorgeous. Yes. Look how you, you've been training it on this fence. It yes. fits it beautifully. Yeah. We haven't had that much luck though. We had, um, I think our first apples last year, but the squirrel came and took them. So I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. <laughs> oh, the squirrel, what kind is it? Does it say what yeah, it right just says? So it's got, oh cool. Summer red apple, Macintosh, Gala. Um, Yellow so, Delicious and Gravenstein. Oh, all, so every, there's like five different ones? Yeah, it's been grafted. grafted. So cool. And cool. so the squirrel, yeah, you'll have to squirrel proof it. What if mm -hmm. you put some netting or something on it? Do you think that would help? We we're thinking about trying that this year. We're not sure how it would, be with the fence but beautiful you've did this is like such a good use of space growing vertically and in against the fence. I show you guys over here you yeah. can these neighbors are friendly you can step over here but I sure. have a clematis blooming <gasps> which is awesome oh my gosh look how pretty and I love this because you can actually have it like rambling is this like a mop head or macrophylla type hydrangea behind it or an Annabelle it's a, an Annabelle type an Annabelle yeah because I like the way that you're Clematis is sort of just rambling. It's going to eventually probably climb over yeah, the Yeah, most of them I have on hydrangea. taller trellises and on fences, but this one I kind of just left it and I yeah. like it. It almost looks like pink champagne. I have pink champagne. It, it might you? be it. Oh, I have it might a list be. of all the ones I have. I, and I think Clematis is another one that I'm fairly new to. I have about three or four. Um, I only have one that's done like pretty awesome for me. And then the other ones are kind of just putzing along, but hopefully they get You'll this You'll see that I, have, that I have a lot. That um, That's kind of my next obsession was, it was first it was Japanese maples and now, and now it's, it's Clematis. Every year I go out and buy like so, 10 and you buy a bunch. the last couple of years. So there's that brushwood nursery that apparently is like oh, the, yeah, one of the great places yes. to buy them. They have really unique varieties. And then there's also, um, people are also doing things different now with the Clematis that instead of just growing them on obelisks or trellises, they are planting them at the base of shrubs. I just and tried that last week. And kind of training them. I'm so excited to try that. Yeah. So that, like, say you have a flowering tree. When it's done flowering, you can sort of just train it so that the tree looks like it's in flower again, but it's actually a clematis. I think that's I love clever. It. And this is butterfly. Oh, wow. So it's a variegated. Yes. I love how it's so light and white. So really pretty. there's actually some reversion on it down here. You'll see some regular oh, leaves. I find that that happens. You know, on my uh, dancing peacock, mm -hmm. I actually had a branch that was reverting oh, to okay. a- Oh, okay. I haven't um, had that on my dancing yeah. peacock. So but I have that on a, on a few things. Yeah, I need to go ahead and cut them cut them off. Because they breed these trees. Mm -hmm. They graft them to get these special cultivars, right? So at some point there is some revision. Look at this one. It has yeah, those little sepals, right? Villa Toronto. This one leaves out yellow and then it turns orange and now it's like red and green like Christmas. It's amazing. This one is a color changing one. And this isn't a lace leaf. This is just like a very open. So it has a very different type of foliage. Yeah, it's very skinny. Yeah. Is this the this is, geranium macarrhiza? This is Roseanne's geranium. Ro Roseanne. This oh. one flowers. It'll flower, start flowering soon. It flowers all the way till froth to like Probably one of the last flowers, probably till December here. So you and find then, that it does bloom really long for you. Oh my God, so long. This awesome. is amazing. But the weird thing is last year it actually got tall and leggy and then it actually started climbing the tree. I've never seen that before. I don't know if that was normal or not. Do you think it gets enough sun in this corner? Do you think that could be why? I think it does. The sun just went away now for it, but usually it has sun all day. Usually when plants reach, right, it's because they're looking for sun. So hmm. I'm just curious if that could be it. But I it don't looks think beautiful so. in this corner. I think maybe that's the way it is now. I don't know. <laughs> so it'll start blooming soon, you said? Yes. Yep. Awesome. What color? Like a pink or purple? Um, it's like a purple, purply pink. This, this um, maple here is Shidava Gold. It's really beautiful. It gets even more beautiful as the summer progress, you know, it turns into summer. I really love these yellow maples mm. because they offer such a pop against all of the green. Yeah. A ginkgo? Yeah. I love ginkgos. I actually want to add one at some point. Does this one get beautiful fall color? This one does. This one gets yellow. Love it. But I wish I would have known that when purchasing because I have certain ones that don't change colors. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's good to know because I'm looking for a ginkgo and so I'll be sure to look yeah, for some. Yeah, this one is Q. K-E-W. K-E-W. I love the foliage on these. Me too. Um, I heard with ginkgo trees that the male, you don't want to get a male ginkgo because they smell really they bad. They smell bad. Isn't that interesting? I know, it's so funny. So you want to get a female ginkgo. You know what else is interesting is as soon as a certain temperature comes, the leaves drop instantly, whereas other trees, just little by little in the fall, the leaves fall off gently. Oh, yeah. This is like one day you wake up and your whole ground is covered in the carpet of yellow leaves, which That's is pretty true. cool. I have heard that as well. What is this plant that you have there with that really large foliage? So that blooms in the fall. It, it looks is, like a Regersia almost. I could be saying that it's wrong. It's a, a Japanese anemone. Oh, anemone. And they're so pretty. And those flowers are great for pressing. I like to make cards out of them. Yeah. 
My anemones are not leafed out like this at all. Really? I hope that they didn't that oh. I didn't lose them because oh, no. they're absolutely Mine beautiful. Mine have been out for a little while now, and you live yeah. 20 minutes from me. I know. We only live about 20 <clears throat> minutes apart. And look at you have the semphal spirea that yes, I shared with you. Thank you. So no, you're welcome. Love I it. love to share plants. So the thing with that semphal spirea is that it does send out some runners, so you have to kind of keep it in check so that you don't get it to get. You know, so it doesn't get too large on you. But the great thing is that you're able to share with friends. Exactly. So, it hasn't gotten too crazy for me. Good. And the little piece that's growing, I'm so excited to give to my mom. Oh, perfect. See, yeah. the gift that keeps on yes, giving. Yes, thank you. Oh, I have one of these. Because of you, I you recommended it. it. The Nana Lutea. Do you love it? I love it. Oh, it stays favorite. so tiny. Um, and the color on it is just so vibrant and beautiful. I've had it in my garden for what? Maybe like two years now. Okay. And it's in my front, one of my front borders. And it's stunning. I absolutely oh, love it. I can't it. wait to show you my big one. I have one that got bigger. And the yellow is more bright because it's in more full sun. This is like yeah. part sun. Mine is in full sun, so it's pretty, okay. it's pretty golden. This, this one has such a beautiful arching habit, this maple. This is Sade no Uchi. And this one I hadn't heard of, but it was recommended to me by Lucille. Lucille. This yeah. is her favorite, isn't it? It's her favorite. Yeah. This one, I just love the shape of it, the form of it. It's not as dense as a lot of the other ones yeah. I've just shown you. Which is why I like it. Then, I like that really open because you get to see the structure of the tree a bit more. Exactly. Yeah. Really and then pretty. in the fall, it has rainbow colors. It's every color except blue, I would say, purple. Every other color. Is, oh, gorgeous. I love it in the fall. And you have a um, Aurelia, a sun gold Aurelia? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to forget yeah. everything. I'm glad and you sun you know, euphorbia. Yeah. 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 You know, the anemones have me worried now because I can't oh. find, I don't know if mine are out. These are pink. Yeah. Yeah. Light pink. Well, if mine don't come back, I'm going to have to replace them because I really love them. And you have a Japanese pyrus. Yeah. And what is this one here? This Some... is a, um, oh, what is it called? It's the same as this one over there. A spirea? Spirea, thank you. Yeah, yes, spirea. Yes. Oh, and another beautiful clematis. Yes. I love how, see, so you've also gotten creative with growing your clematis. You yes. have it growing up the telephone pole. This telephone pole, very ugly, and now it's beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. And you have, and you just tacked on some little brad nails with some fishing wire, mm -hmm. and you have it trellised up the telephone yeah, pole. This been is there an excellent use years. of space. Beautiful. Really creative and I didn't know how perfect. long the fishing line would last, and there's a few strings that broke after three years, but overall it's still fine and usable. What yeah. type of... This is, is Twombly's this Red Sentinel. Oh yes, this is the one you've yes. been telling me that it's holds on It's getting wider than, than I'm used to. It's yes. usually so like compact and tall and skinny and now all of a sudden its form is different. I oh, interesting. So I might prune this one a little bit more next winter. Um, this side is starting to turn green because of the shade, but mm -hmm. this one, what's cool about this is it keeps its leaves until December, longer than any of my other maples. And it also gets the leaves the earliest in the spring. So I really enjoy that. It's pretty. My whole neighborhood is just leafless and I'm the only one who still has leaves. Lucky so you. I love it. When I drive by, I'm like, yeah, awesome. yeah, I have leaves. And you have some hosta, you have a hosta bed here underneath your tree. And I love how you've created a platform like a Yeah, my kids love that. For your, for your girls. So I've fun. tried growing heucheras and other shade plants under the tree. Everything dies. And then it made me learn how strong, how tough the hostas really are. Yes. I didn't realize, you know, you see that on the tag, they're, they're sturdy, plant, they're strong plants. But yeah. you don't realize until you grow them how like nothing else will survive here, except for the, the uh, Yes, the geranium macaroni. Yes, you got me. So that, the, I love that perennial. I actually bought mine at a plant sale. You saw how large it was. When mm -hmm. you came over to my garden, I gave you that piece. And I think and it made a baby right here. Look at that. And I thought it was one that I just planted. And then I realized I saw this pop up and I thought, oh my gosh, because I just bought a root of a different kind because I, it does so well here. Yeah. So I'm impressed at how drought tolerant it is because this area is so dry. You know something? And you have a lot of root competition here, right? Because of the a big lot, tree. Yeah. This is a really when I dig When I dug tree. all these bulbs in, I had to dig like maybe five times before I found an empty area for the bulbs. Yeah, so it was a lot roots. of work. So the interesting thing is that I see you have yours growing into the tree. I also have mine growing under a very mature grouping of trees. They're like scrub pines um, and oak. and. So you can see that it's going to be hardy under trees. Like you said, it deals with drought like a champ. So then you can even divide that and like dot it in different spots. Like you so Antoinette, let's go now towards your front yard. Um, but look at these two maples. They're just glowing in the sun. I think I have this one. Summer gold. Yes, I do. Mine's a baby. Um, but look how beautiful this color is. And it stays gold all year. I love the contrast. I put it there on purpose near the Gorgeous. Emperor what? One. Emperor One. I have two blood goods. And talking about things that we've done that we wish we'd done differently, I do love my blood goods, but after I saw your Emperor Ones, I sort of wish that I had chosen the Emperor I Ones. I love the structure. Yeah, I read they're more cold hardy and something about the leaf color or something. I don't remember. It's gorgeous. But we have two of these, but we have blood good as well. Do you? Yeah. And do you, what do you find the differences are in your garden? Do you enjoy your Emperor Ones more than the blood good? 
I don't know. I'm actually really enjoying the blood good. Oh, surprisingly. Good. good. Mine um, are in my driveway. It's a bit of a wet area. I feel like they could be bigger than what they are, but they've struggled because of it being a very damp spot. Mm -hmm. um, they are looking pretty and they have grown, but I don't feel like they've grown as well or they could be, I feel like they could be healthier. But um, yeah, maybe one day we'll add an Emperor One somewhere else because it, this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You'll see the Lamium ground cover again. This I just transplanted last year, so that kind of gives you an idea of how quickly the Lamium can spread. I absolutely love the use of ground covers because eventually you I don't have to weed have, here anymore. Yeah, you don't have to weed here to mulch. It's, it's perfect. I'd like That's to edge that one. area a little better so we can weed back around it better, but I haven't gotten a chance. Yeah, I haven't mulched yet this year. I mean, we can only do what we can do, right? right? <laughs> And here's your other beautiful Emperor One. I love how you have two flanking yeah, your driveway. Yeah, flanking the driveway. I'm thinking about putting the Lamium underneath here as well. So we've got to get that going. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. And you have a good amount of it, so you can just transplant some. Yeah, it should be easy. And this area I call Conifer Kingdom because the theme was kind of like a Japanese garden. Yeah. So for a while I decided to do um, just evergreens. And we added the ma two maples in. This area actually to me is a little bit boring now because all these heathers, all these things that you see here, usually have flowers in the winter so they bloom from probably late December all the way till April and this year we had a polar vortex that killed a lot of them yeah. so there's not that many left um, so my thought I wanted to see if your um, subscribers had an opinion on this if I remove all the um, dying um, heathers heathers thank you. Yeah. Should I put some flowers here like some cone flowers or something to dress it up in the summer or should I keep the theme of just Japanese do you know what you could add here? Personally, what, what I would do, I would add a couple of grasses. Grasses, I feel like grass would look really cool here. Um, Maybe like the Japanese forest grass? Yeah, yeah. You could do Japanese forest grass, you could do even the, um, my favorite is the Carl Forrester. Oh yes. Reed grass. Wait, are those the taller ones? They're that... tall and narrow. So they, do they like... move in the wind? They do. Oh, I do like that yeah. movement. And then in the fall, you'd have some interest because they would look almost like wheat, you know, the panicles mm -hmm. or the, that they send up. I think it would look beautiful. And especially you have, space for three because you well that heather still looks alive yeah and some of that There's one back there doing fine yeah that's i awesome. removed probably like 15 already wow i had a lot in this you space. had a good amount it doesn't look like that many would fit but we just removed some more yesterday yeah but i mean yeah certainly flowers cone flowers would, would be nice really like a hmm. nice white cone flower would look pretty oh, with all I of these colors white. yeah You're like right. the white swan that's true um or powwow it's a white taller, or powwow white I tend to go with pinks a lot yeah, yeah. The white, i think the white would look really pretty i think so too because it would contrast nicely with the greens and the yellows mm -hmm. second um, thought would be a grass mm. let's have a grass this is a germane's gyration it has like a spiral trunk that kind of curves it undulates it's a beast it grows <laughs> so fast i'm out here giving it haircuts like a big big haircut twice a year yeah i mean it would just take over the space i didn't realize that when i bought it yeah, it says like vigorous growth when you yeah. look at the, the information online, but you don't realize what that means until you have it. And what have we learned as gardeners? You have to believe the tags. Yes, <laughs> you do. We want to stick as many plants as, you know, as possible in a small spot. But I have a but... ginkgo called American that was supposed to be tiny, like two feet by two feet, and that thing also grows really much faster I than know. the tag said. They always do. That's the thing. Oh my gosh, your peony is looking magnificent. Look at all of these blooms that are about to open up for you. I'm excited. That's awesome. Do you know which one this is? Sa is it Sarah Bernhardt? Yep, Sarah Bernhardt, oh, and then yeah. Carl, Carl Rothenfield, or Rothenfield yes, something. yes. So you have two planted here. Yep. So one, so the Sarah Bernhardt is a lighter pink, like a very light pink. Yep. I have that one. That's actually my favorite pretty, in my garden. I love that one. And they're so fragrant. It makes right? great bouquets. Yes, I like it the does. bouquets. And I have a friend who got married and had peonies, so when I, whenever they bloom, I always give them to her, and oh, it makes me so happy to give those awesome. away. Like a little mm -hmm. anniversary gift. But when I planted these, I had no idea they would be this tall because I had never grown peonies. And you just see the little flower on the tag, you don't, you don't realize know. it. So it kind of covers up my Mikawa Yatsubusa there. That's your second Mikawa? My second. I How many do you have of them? I have um, I have two. Those are gorgeous. I love them. Are they the ones that they call the lion's mane? No, that's Shishigashira, and I have ah, that one too. Cool. We'll Another one of my one. favorites. So I like this. I think it's going to be awesome when these bloom because you'll have the light pink and then the Carl mm -hmm. Rosenfield is a darker pink. And I'm actually so surprised that you don't even have any staking or no one staking. of those peony rings and they're my don't flap so right look at them they look awesome i think my favorite part is just watching the ants guard the, the buds oh, yes. <laughs> i know it sounds silly but yes, i love that yes that's so funny um the ants is part of the process right because once they start putting out that it's honeydew, a honeydew yeah yeah it's awesome then it's, you know they're almost it's opening. one of my first signs of spring when i see the little ants crawling on the buds i know i absolutely love peonies they're awesome this one I, is i'm gonna get away from the shadow um shiraz yeah there's another name for the shiraz shiraz oh uh 
Geisha Gone Wild? Geisha Gone Wild. So I have a Shiraz <laughs> too, and um, George calls it the crazy Japanese maple because it's got really, ours has a really funky growth pattern. Does it? And he's actually put all kinds of like staking on it and bamboo sticks <laughs> to sort of brace it so that it grows yeah, in George a certain- Yeah, George is so good at He is good at them. it. He's really good at it. He, he trains them right into shape. But yours is looking beautiful. It almost has like a pink cast to it, right? Yes, in I love spring. it now. Yeah, the, these trees are spectacular for their spring color and their fall color. They sort of fade to the background a tiny bit in the in the summer, but even in the summer, their foliage, the shape of the leaves are just so mm -hmm. interesting. They're really beautiful. I love how you have some creeping flocks as your brown cover underneath. Yeah, I tried to get all the same color and then the tag didn't match Surprise. the color, but you know, I like it now. I, know, I, like, I, like, the, it. I like the combo. I think it's cool. It's like a little bouquet, <laughs> different colors. And your dry creek bed is awesome. This this. So when I'm looking at this, I'm already spotting like five things I want to talk about. <laughs> a, um, it's called Acer Campestra Carnival. So awesome. it's a different type of a maple. Um, what is it? Not a swamp maple. I forgot, but I know the scientific name, the Acer Campestra. It's beautiful. This one um, has a reversion I've got to cut off, which oh, is yeah. interesting. This one is only half reverted. So I'm like, do I cut that off or not? I think I would. I, I would. I yeah, would. Because I you don't want to risk this being more dominant yeah. and taking over. It's funny because I had a Euonymus too that was green and yellow and it all reverted after a while too. Mm. So I think that the dominant color at some point usually takes over if you don't prune it. So. People really notice this tree because it's white and there aren't many white trees. Yes. It does prefer a little bit more shade and sometimes mm -hmm. it can get crispy if it's very dry and hot. The leaves can burn because mm -hmm. they're so light in the sun. And this is full sun, this area of your yard. Um, most, a lot of the time, but I think those neighbor's trees are getting taller. Sometimes it's kind of dappled. Oh, okay, okay. It's really pretty. But when I planted everything, I thought it was full sun. Yeah. Starting to change a little bit. This is really interesting, this area here. Was there a reason you did the dry creek bed or was so it more for us? I love rocks. I collect rocks and I wanted a place where I could um, collect rocks and put them. And this is how this area started. It was all lawn. And then I just went out and dug a little, um, a little river shape yeah. just with a shovel. And then I put down some weed barrier and at the time I had um, a little like 18 month old daughter and we would go to the beach and collect buckets of rocks. Every, every week we would go, That's fine. we filled it. And then I thought, oh, well, let me, well, maybe for a year or two, it was just the creek, maybe a couple plants or trees on the side. And then we eventually removed more lawn to add like the beds around it. I I'm, love it, I but love it the maintenance is so much work. The leaves that come in here in the winter and the fall, I have to blow them out. And then there's always weeds in there. Did you place any kind of like, um, weed suppression or like a barrier underneath? Yep, I had a, had a weed barrier mat underneath, fabric. but the, um, the dirt kind of somehow gets under there and it's, yeah. it only helped the first couple I, I of know, years. I yeah. know, I'm not a fan not sure of landscape fabric. I mean, I'm sure in some applications it's helpful under gravel. I never was, but you'll see but my vegetable garden. We actually started using it there and yeah. it's amazing over yeah. there. I think they certainly have their use in the garden. Not um, for flower beds, I don't not think. For not for flower, flower beds. beds. Yeah, and I actually like, love the idea of this. This is the flow of it. It has such a nice flow. It literally, like you said, looks like a river. And I'm a huge proponent of, like we both are, removing grass, putting in more <laughs> flower beds. Um, we say it's less lawn to cut. Our husbands will say it's more <laughs> mulching and it's more having to weed more whack right, yeah. around it. But I mean, you know, I, I really do think it looks beautiful. And it provides, you know, flowers for the pollinators. Like we're helping the environment, right? Yeah, so speaking of that, that actually reminded me of um, kind of one of my garden regrets. The only regret I have with my garden is that um, I love Japanese maples. I love the way they look. I love that birds use them and build nests in them. But they're not a native species. Mm. And so now that I'm getting more educated on it, I want to have more native stuff. Yeah. So when I get uh, perennials, I make sure a lot of them are natives now. I'm getting a lot more into that. And I wish I had great. an oak tree to support native wildlife. Yeah. Well, maybe someday you might be able to plant one down that way where you have a little more open For area. For sure. I mean, we just planted a red bud, so I'm, I'm working great. at it. Oh yeah, and red buds um, are native. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a red bud that just finished blooming. They're beautiful too. I agree with you. But as we grow as gardeners and we learn, you know better, you do better, so. But you do have a beautiful collection. And like you said, if you're adding it through perennials, then that's gotta help in some way. Mm -hmm. the, what is this beauty called? This is Katsura. Kat, we have a Katsura. We have one. Yes, but mine is a little stuff. younger and mine is still in their early fall. Because even though we live 20 minutes apart, I think we're in different zones. I'm a 6B and you're a yes, 7. Yes, this zone changed to 7. And a it's seven. like a little microclimate here where it's a little warmer. Yeah, and that's interesting because you're by the water. We live on a little island here. You live on an island, yes. right. And so that's interesting. I would always think that by the water it'd be colder, but maybe not. And my Katsura still has its early fall color, which is really fiery. I love it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's stunning. It looks more like orangey and a little bit of red and some pink. This one I can't 
decide whether to let it keep getting tall or I come through and I prune it and make it so that I can reach every branch to prune. But now I'm like, maybe I should just let it go. Yeah, let it get tall. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. And what is this one? This one has a really lacy leaf. This is a waterfall. This is from waterfall. Walmart for like twenty dollars. See that? I'm telling you, I visit Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's all the time. I love I? those videos. You yeah, make. you do. You love them. I too. love I'm them because I can so stop from me. home. Shop from home, right? Because you have the littles, so it's yes, just. I have easier. three young children, so I absolutely love being able to stay home and you go to the store for me. <laughs> yes, yes, it's awesome. But you know what I love about this too is that, like you said, you found this at Walmart, right? Some of us don't either have access to nurseries that are specialty nurseries, or don't have the budget to buy exactly things at the specialty budget. nurseries. So once in a while, you can find a gem like this Japanese maple or a fancy conifer for. A budget price point which my i think kids, is amazing my kids go under here all the time they do always they? play yeah i love oh, it oh that's so fun oh it's because fun. it's like a little hot right a, mushroom like, house. Um, a mushroom's shape yeah that's so fun that's cool yeah they spend a lot of time actually in the stream they bring like notebooks and they pretend it's a little school that's so fun it's a cute such space. a sweet age your girls are at <laughs> and this is so your Twombly's was that way. Is this Skeeter's? Skeeter's broom. Okay. So Skeeter's and Twombly's are supposed to have a similar, more columnar type shape. But yes. you said your Twombly's is getting a little wider. The Twombly's had looked just like this for a while, the shape of it at least, but suddenly it got really wide. But I like this one a lot. I think when I first got it, I was unsure and I preferred Twombly's. Now I'm really liking this one. Yeah. And, and it's I, got a really nice red color. Yeah. And I love the contrast with that little Anna's Magic Ball below it. I love your Anna's Magic Ball. You know something? I've been interested in this shrub for a couple of years because it keeps this round sphere shape. It keeps it perfectly. It's, it's perfect. gorgeous and it requires no pruning. No, not at all. And um, now I know you don't deal with deer. That would be a problem for me. I'm just curious if they would eat on this. So if anyone who's out there watching has an Anna's Magic Ball and also have deer, let us know in the comments because I would be interested. I would love to add a couple of these beautiful yellow globe shaped evergreens to my garden and you have the blue fescue i actually just bought some and so i have a question for you sure so one you deal with bunnies i've had some comments mention that they have some of this blue fescue and that the bunnies eat it and two that they self-seed a lot what is your experience with it antoinette so the rabbits haven't really eaten it much maybe when it was young there was like one little bite but that's fine they prefer the other grasses that i have like the, the carex or the um lilleropi Oh, yeah, the liriope. Liriope, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The liriope. It's like grass-like with little purple flowers. Yep. If they self-seed, I love it. They don't self-seed often enough, and actually, I have them die in the winter. So lot, you want so them? I like when they self-seed. And self -seed they die here. back on you? Sometimes they oh, die and then just turn brown and don't don't come back. So for me, I actually haven't had much luck where I'm not going to be buying them again. Okay, you see. So I do and, not and recommend them, but I love the blue. That's Yeah, that's interesting, and I'm glad that you shared that experience with us because, um, like I said, I just bought some for the first time. And I've had those comments and I've debated whether I'm going to keep them and plant them or not. So, um, so thank you. Is this a Carex? Yes. I had some bad luck with my Carex. A couple of them Mine that I bought last year didn't first two years and then back. now, yeah, after that cold snap. So I, I read know. online that you've got to cut back the dead, but I cut, you'll probably see a, a few over there, but um, they just don't look good cut. So I'm afraid to cut this one. I don't really know what to do. Yeah. Maybe just give it some time and then give yeah. it a haircut. When you're cutting your trees, maybe you give that a haircut yeah. too. Is this a Globosa um, Nana? No, it is not. No. Um, it's it is really a pretty. Caryopteris, I think. Some Cary other conifer. Ah, oh, it's cool. Oh, no. Is Cary Caryopteris? No. Say that again. I can't say it right now. You know, when I, now that I think about it. It's like a full blooming purple flower, isn't it? I think I'm wrong. <laughs> it's okay. We're tripping up our plant names. This is what happens when you have too many plants on <laughs> the brain. Right. Um, I feel, okay, listen, I could be wrong, but I just bought something very similar, and I think this is a Globosa nana. I will look it up. I have the name. Yeah, I think. Look, I could be totally wrong too. Somewhere. It could be a Caradiroptis or <laughs> look, I can't even say. Okay, it. it's a dwarf Cryptomeria. Oh. Yeah, Globus and Anna. Oh, you right? I see that? Oh, but yeah. In my Five mind, points. I'm remembering. I'm remembering the Cryptomeria, which I mix it up with the other thing. Wait, how do you say it? Caradiroptis. I can't say. Caryopteris. There you something. go. <laughs> okay, so something really awesome that you did here, and I know that you did this a couple of years ago. You were actually pregnant with your last baby, That's right? That's right. Yeah. Yep. And I have visited you, and you were creating a high-intensity orchard. Is yes, that what you call so this it? was yeah. So 2021. So if you want to tell us about this, this is great. Yeah. So I have um, cherries, pears, peaches, and nectarines, and I learned a special method online. It's called the Dave Wilson Nursery Method, and what it is is you plant some fruit trees, and you plant four fruit trees in the same hole, like maybe 18 inches apart and you treat it kind of as one tree. So you prune it to where you want to leave the center kind of open to have some airflow, like you would one tree. But when you get it, you plant it and you cut them down to knee height, uh, very short so that you have some branching that has fruit low. 
so you can pick them. And then every spring you have to cut them down to maybe your head. You choose one height and you keep that. So I keep it like to my head. So I'll yeah. come out and I'll just prune this, um, I think late summer and then you do spring. And what it is, the idea is you have successive ripening. So you'll have certain fruits, you know, in the same area ripen yeah. maybe in midsummer or early summer and then some not until the fall and versus having all of a sudden you're, you're like swamped with, you know, 300 cherries in like one week. You can have some throughout the season, throughout two seasons. Have they produced for you yet, all of your trees? We just had one pear and, and the squirrel got them. So we'll see. Oh yeah, and I'm trying got your apples too. And I'm trying organic. I'm trying not to do any pesticides or any sprays to see how it goes. Maybe yeah. I'll get some nets. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. And you planted these all bare root. All bare root. So that's interesting too because... And they were tiny. They were like little pencils. Yeah, like little whips, right? And look how much um, calip the caliper has grown. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. This is great. I love this. You'll see some of the seedlings around there are poppies. Oh yeah, poppies. poppies. That's also and then in the middle of each tree, I have strawberry plants hoping to be like a ground, a ground cover. cover. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. And what else did you do here last year? You had a beautiful wildflower meadow, really? It was like all kinds of zinnias. What kind of flowers yes, did you yes, have here? Yes, mostly zinnias. And we, I planted milkweed all around the outside of the uh, bed to attract monarchs. And sure enough, we had so many. I could come out here and there were just hundreds. Oh, we had one that even so. had like a little sticker that had a, a tag that you could like report him. Oh. It was so cool. I never know that you could tag monarch butterflies. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. We're gonna... Um, Check out the area here. I like how you put some stepping stones so that when this is all full with your wildflowers, and if you have a photo of that, I'd love to share it. Absolutely. And um, so your girls ever go and sit, do you actually go sit in the middle of all the flowers? We spent a lot of time there. Oh, that's awesome. Butterfly and bee watching. That's so fun. I love it. This is a beautiful area. You've done a beautiful job. So here we're going to go through the front of your house and you have another ginkgo flanking your walkway. I love this. This is I love a ginkgos. ginkgo jade butterflies. I absolutely jade love butterflies. this one. Is this a good one? It's a good would one. Would you recommend it? I would. Yeah. Cool. Does this one turn yellow? Yes. Does this one turns yellow. Awesome. Your armeria looks really pretty. Yes. Your variety is different than mine. We talked about this because some of mine died back last winter. The ones with the thicker leaves. So this oh, one yeah. right here. They all died, so I actually just bought those to replace them. So I have that Here style. Too. Seed Dreams Thrift. Yes. That one's supposed to have a really long blooming time, so that's it does. why I picked it. So last summer, well, I planted mine last spring. They bloomed all summer, all spring, into the fall. Same. I deadheaded it once in a while. But I didn't have any like this because I thought it looked too... I kind of thought they looked weedy, to be honest. Weedy, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it in your garden in this little bit of a drift, I, I don't mind it as much. Um, and the fact that these seem to be hardier than the others um, would be reason enough to plant this variety mm -hmm. over the other one, right? I agree. I'm really liking this one. Pretty. So this Japanese maple is called Scarlet Princess. And this is the one that I've had the longest, probably like seven years. And it never, it never grows. It, every year has a little bit of dieback, a little bit of growth, but it always looks great. So I absolutely love it here. It actually it's almost perfect. looks like just a little shrub or a little accent. Mm. It looks beautiful in your bed. Is that a Japanese umbrella pine? It is, and it had so much um, death one year from just from being dry uh -huh. that uh, I almost got removed it. But it's grown back a bit, and you can't really see its funky shape there. So I'm really glad I left it. Right there. It's, I, I love the the needles on those. They're nice and thick it's a, and waxy. Yeah, it's a dwarf really one. Beautiful. That's a dwarf one. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say because these get pretty large. They get really have, big. I'm like, you're brave it's an planting extra dwarf. it in the middle it's of this. An extra dwarf. <laughs> extra dwarf. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Yeah, we all know how that goes. I have um. I have a Colorado blue spruce that was supposed to be a dwarf. Did I ever oh, tell you the story of that guy? Oh man, it's huge, beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, but it is really big. And your cone flowers, I can't believe how far ahead they are. Um, and we talked about only living 20 be, minutes apart. Look it at it, it's already budding. This, this is Echinacea purpurea, so this is the- Oh, the traditional cone yes. flower, the native variety. Yeah, the one that gets pretty tall. So the native yeah. variety does, I think, grow a little quicker than the other ones. And this is your other Nana Lutea that you say gets more Look sun. Look how much, yeah, how much yellower it is. It's so beautiful, so, so vibrant and it's taken on like a wider shape. So that's really cool mm. to see. And what a beautiful contrast you have with that um, red hookera right behind it. I love contrast though in and, my garden. That's like one yeah, of my things. Right. But I have um, someone I know, actually it's my mom. My mom <laughs> likes green stuff. So for Mother's Day and different holidays, I would buy her these you know cool plants that I like with their funky colors, like hookeras of different colors. Yeah. And my mom, she likes trying to be polite, but turns out my mom likes a soothing green garden and I respect that. And I think that those have yeah. its, their place too. Like a monotone garden, right? Yeah. Like green on green. And I think that you can have a beautiful garden in that sense too, because you just add difference in texture, in foliage and different heights. And it, I think it exactly. looks beautiful So when as I well. step into one of those all green gardens, I feel just so relaxed, so it calming, you know, it's soothing. It is. I like a lot of color in my garden, especially a lot of contrasting colors. And instead of feeling like relaxed and just calm in my garden, um, the garden really energizes me. So whenever I come out here, 
I'm just full of these ideas and just inspiration and really high energy because it like makes me so happy. Yeah. Your lilies are getting nice and tall. Yeah, those are going to be like, pink. Light pink, pink lilies. Everything's pink. My theme's like pink and yellow flowers, yeah. kind of pink, purple. Well, pink, yellow, and My purple favorites. are very complementary mm -hmm. to each other. What rose is this? This is the Atlas rose. Oh, Proven oh my God! Finally has one with a scent. This is not the Atlas. It is, and Look I have how big a second. It is. I have a second one right over here, there, oh my and my God. kids love to sniff it. Antoinette, you came over and I showed you my at last. It was this little winky <laughs> thing, and it was struggling. You haven't had luck with yours. No, no. Roses um, in my garden, for some reason, it, it could be a couple of things. I do have them in a bed that has a little bit of poor drainage. Roses like to be on the drier side, so I think that is my uh, thought on why they don't do that well. But yours look amazing, and this is such a beautiful rose. It has like that apricot peach mm -hmm. color. I just used the same, like, yeah. It smells fragrant. really good. I know. It's really fragrant. For a while, I was I was never growing the David Austin, only the, um, it is a knockout to the Proven Winners, and they never had a scent, and it kind of disappointed me, so I didn't have much interest. But yeah. then I discovered this one that has a smell. Yeah. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. and it smells good. It really does. I wish mine had done better. It ended up dying over this winter, and I dug it out. But right now, I say I don't want any more roses, but you know. <laughs> you know how that goes. <laughs> you know how that goes. These are beautiful alliums. Are these white? Yes. Do you know what variety, what they're called? Oh, I think maybe Nigrum, although Nigrum means black, I thought. They're pretty. Yeah. They're going to be gorgeous when they open. You can already see them starting mm -hmm. to open. Really cool. I love the way they kind of like flank your walkway here. And you have a lot of annuals on your walkway. Yep, mostly on just your patio pansies. Here. And that is such a cool annual. planter. You're a little fish. Oh, the fish one. The fish planter. That's these, my husband. These are he my loves favorite that. pansies. These alliums are blooming. Are those a different variety than these? Yeah. Or is it just the lighting making Different them? variety. Cool. You have a yellow dahlia back there? Yes. Did I you buy to... it in bloom or did you plant the tuber? I bought it in bloom. I tried to go back today and buy another one all the way in Dartmouth and, and uh, they, didn't they have sold any? out. Oh, yeah. They sold out of Probably all the stuff Mother's I wanted. Day. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. Is this You're... like a, a giant, green giant dwarf upper variety? Yes. What is it called again? Little giant. Little giant. Little giant. Again, nice globe form, just like the Anna's Magic we Bulb of Green. We had some snow that fell, and it had a huge, like, oh, it just yeah. looked terrible. I was about to um, I was about to dig it up. I'm glad oh, I left it. It looks good. It looks good. And this, what type is this? This is also a variegated Japanese, this, is it a Japanese maple? Yes, this is yep. Benny Shichi Henji. It's got pink, and then the pink turns to a cream later in the summer. Um, a gold mop cypress? Yeah, I pruned that one. Yeah, these are one of my favorites. I pruned one of mine into a topiary. Oh, I remember that. I remember yeah. seeing that. You yeah. showed me. It's fun. It's fun. Um, what type of hydrangeas are those? Are those like a quick fire or something? Because they kind of open. I've got the little quick fire over there. Mm -hmm. This one is the the one that has like some pink later. White and pink. Oh, white and pink. It's either strawberry vanilla or the... Um, strawberry vanilla is right here. Yeah. And... I know. I'm blanking right pinky now. Pinky Winky? Not Pinky Winky. Not a limelight. Is it a limelight? I have another one over... A little limelight over mm -hmm. there. It's one of the... Yes. One of the pinnacle or the... Yes. Yeah. Uh, your candy tuft. Mine did well this year. I overwintered some in some pots and I just planted it out in front of my blue Colorado blue, my weeping blue spruce. Oh, I think look the so color pretty. will look blue so and white. pretty. I love yeah. that. What is this big shrub here? This is a weeping pussy willow. Oh, pretty. My kids actually go in here. This is a little playhouse. Oh, look at this, See, George. How, how fun. When it's hot, we do hang out here. That we have little fun. picnics in there. See, can you imagine like you've created such a beautiful space for your girls and imagine being a child and wanting to hide underneath the tree like it's a little like mm -hmm. tp or hut kids love like tents mm -hmm. and forts and such that's awesome i love that and that is another hydrangea little there quick fire a little quick fire does it do well even though it's a little bit shaded it's it actually gets it actually this is actually full sun. Sun. This, well, is, um, this is the end of the day so yeah. it could be that the sun is just going mm -hmm. away another uh, yeah yellow. this is south facing this south. is the south facing oh, garden so this right is here your sunniest this is the spot. sunniest spot actually yeah. All of your daffodils probably looked gorgeous a couple they weeks did. ago. Pretty. And I cannot believe how gorgeous this looks. Is this a blue atlas cedar? It is. The, the new growth is spectacular because it's so, so soft. We actually- um, In beautiful color. We actually chopped the top of it off. Oh, two years to ago. To control the growth? Yes, and we actually brought it in as a Christmas tree. We had a blue oh, Christmas tree. So awesome. This is beautiful. And I love how you have the Lassamachia. Lassamachia, well, Creeping Jenny. Creeping Jenny. And sometimes in our area, I know that I'm in Massachusetts and you're in Rhode Island. And in Massachusetts, they don't sell it because they consider it invasive. Oh, wow. So you've actually given me some for me to put in my pots <laughs> as my trailers. And thank you, because I love it. But I haven't yet planted it in the landscape for fear of it becoming invasive. I was afraid too for fears and decided to try it out. Yeah, but it's looking great. And it seems like it's contained. Look I at that. Is that a pine? Did you guys make that pine cone? Yeah, my daughter's in preschool and she made that actually at her school. And there's a robin's nest in here and oh, we'll see oh, some oh, eggs. Is there eggs in it? There are. You can put the camera up in there. 
we'll have to definitely get a clip of that mm -hmm. without disturbing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, another hydrangea and then your azalea, white azalea. And there's some of that sensitive fern that you shared with me. Yes. I, I want to say mine didn't make it back. You know why? Because these like moisture, you told me, I believe. And I, think so. I had mine planted under those scrub pines and oaks oh, okay. with a lot of root competition. So they weren't getting a lot of water. So I don't think that mine made it. I just had to dig some up yesterday, actually. It's taking Did over you? one of my plants so I can share some with you. Okay. Yeah, I would love some. Thank you. This is Autumn Moon. We have one of these. This is actually George's favorite tree in yes, our garden. Love it. We staked ours and finally it's so straight now. Well, not the top, but it looks better than it did. And these Japanese maples with these full leaves like this are called the full moon, right? Mm -hmm. Full moon Japanese maples. They have gorgeous leaves. I love the moon ones. This and is purple ghost. Oh, I have a purple ghost. We have a few that we share the same. This is a pretty one too. Yeah, it has the, really nice reticulation on the, the ghost series has the reticulation. Yes. So I have two of the ghost series. What other one do you maples. have? Um, sister ghost. I have sister ghost. Yeah, you, do probably, you? you probably have them because I probably told you. Yes, you probably one. did tell me you loved it. And um, so the sister ghost I have and I have the purple ghost. So this purple ghost has really beautiful veining. It starts with this red with this dark burgundy purple color. It's gorgeous. Um, I really love it. I was actually considering moving it to more of a prime spot, but I always worry about moving the trees because I don't want to risk them you know, mm -hmm. dying on me. So uh, luckily maybe we can storm it. Luckily the Japanese maples have the pancake shaped roots. They don't have top roots, so they're not too bad to move. Yeah, and I and their roots are not aggressive and they're fairly shallow, so they're pretty yeah. easy. I plant them, so. you know, near my septic, near the house. It's not a big deal. That's good to hear. You hear that, George? You can plant trees near your septic <laughs> and your and your <laughs> what do we call it? The leaching field. He's always yes. very worried. Mm -hmm. So our front yard, I would love to have some more plantings there. Um, so maybe a couple See of this? Japanese maples. See this? This is our septic. I had the septic guys come out and I discussed this with them. Oh the orchard. Yes, and they said zinnias were fine and, they, and you know I made sure to put them a little distance away and yeah and they're, they're fine. the door ones fine. Yeah. everything's fine so maybe we'll add some stuff to the front yard <clears throat> um, what is this yellow leaf so that I thought that was a conicloa or a Japanese forest grass but it's not because there's a little bloom on this it is spider wart spider wart it's got these really cool purple flowers that just don't stop they just keep blooming and blooming awesome. and then supposedly they're edible and there's someone I follow on Instagram a black forager and she made a special drink out of these so I cannot wait to try it that is cool and this variety is called sweet Kate so it's very chartreuse usually they're just like a green medium green I've seen some in green that's really cool and some ajuga ground cover. Mine is just yes. blooming now. I have the burgundy glow. I had the burgundy glow and by accident there was some black scallop in one of the pots. Oh. And the black scallop seems to be much stronger and vigorous than um, the... Um, I think you shared some black scallop with mm -hmm. me last year. It's and another arium. You another have, arium. I have three. Yeah, I you love have three. It. And another pink clematis, which is a theme and I love <laughs> yes. that. Um, this was actually an accident. I actually ordered... Um, Orange Dream Japanese maple, yeah. but it was orange. But I was like, okay, a third is okay because I love it so we much. We have an orange dream actually. Do you? Do yep. you like it? Yes. And right now it looks this color okay. and it can take a little bit of sun, but we'll see as the season progresses. For a while, I believe this, that this one was orange dream. <laughs> they look very similar actually. Look at all the um, buds on the lamium. Yes. This look one's it. in, in more sun than the other ones. It's about to bloom. And so it has a lot more flowering mm -hmm. because of the sun. So we can tell it shade or sun. This is a great ground cover. So would you say that this side of your house gets full sun? This gets afternoon sun. So okay. in the morning it's shaded up until, I don't know, maybe 11 and, and then it gets sun. Okay. Because I'm trying to figure out if we get an arium. Is that what you call it? Yeah. I always say arium. Arium. Where we would place it. I have an idea for where I want to put it. What is this? Uh, this is rustling in the pink. Rustling in the pink. I like the name of it. I love your girl's um, house out here. Mm -hmm. And this is your rose bed, you said? Yes, there was a shade tree here and we removed it. With the shade tree, my so husband, there's a stump in the center, I bet? Um, we had somebody grind it, uh -huh. and as soon as I planted roses, my husband said, oh, why would you plant you know, roses that need a lot of nutrients where a tree was? And they did amazing. Yeah. I guess they like the loosened soil, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, maybe because the, the roots kind of loosened up the soil. Yeah, I guess. And not only that, this is getting full sun, mm -hmm. so that could help as well. It's so robust, this one. This is this whole the area, Alexander of Kent? This yes, one? Yeah. this whole air, area will be filled with um, poppies in the spring and then later all the um, sweet alyssum. Yeah, so you have purple sweet alyssum. I have a lot of white sweet oh, alyssum. White. I love sweet alyssum. Me too. I think it's such an easy... I love the little mini pollinators seed. that come. Yeah. The little like bees that have stripes on mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I love it. I actually love it. I actually find that it does well in bouquets too. Does it? It does. It, it lasts a while. I add that for all my bouquets. Oh, so awesome. I know that you sell little bouquets with your girls like yes. in the summer for fun. I love that. And is this, oh, is this a magnolia? I just ordered this magnolia. It's magnolia, let's see, I was debating black tulip, but it's not the black tulip, it's the other one, genie. And then you have this, is this your pollinator bed? I know you have yes. a bed that you call your pollinator yeah, bed. Yeah, this is one that um, I rototilled the lawn myself. I was really proud to have made this bed myself. 
Yeah. Um, I like the um, shape too. Tilled it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love the shape. Uh, it's so much more interesting to have curvy beds, right? Yeah. Along the side of my foundation, it's a side that I don't often show because it's still a work in progress, but it's got a straight line. And I sort of, um, you know, I've talked to George a couple of times about when we edge it to maybe just give it a little bit more shape. Mm -hmm. This looks great. I love I'm just it. so proud of this bed because it was when I had uh, my second daughter was born. So I had a baby and I had a toddler. I was just really exhausted and tired and it, it felt so good to come out here and just do something. That's right. Yeah. It works with your hands. I found um, after the birth of Dylan, and I think I've talked to you about this before, I had, um, you know, I dealt with postpartum a little bit and mm -hmm. it really, isn't it so therapeutic it's so to be therapeutic. out in your garden? Yes, this it's really amazing. saved me. This bed was like I my agree. joy. <laughs> Gardening, that's actually mm -hmm. how it became such a love for me is so therapeutic. Just being out in nature and then working in the soil, digging in something with your hands when the sun is hitting you, it's just amazing. Yes, absolutely. Um, these are my butterfly bushes that I thought were dead and finally oh, are getting yeah, both that, that one and then that one. So these are not the Pugster? Um, the Pugster is right back there, no growth. No growth on the Pugster. Yeah, I yanked a couple of mm -hmm. mine out because they, even when I did the scratch the bark test, yeah. there was no growth. Well, you know what? I did the scratch the bark test on my roses and on these dead ones, no life, but it was in the roots, I guess, that there's life. Oh, that's good so to it's, know. So it's tricky. Well, I don't, I'm fairly certain that my Pugsters yeah. were just dead. Yeah, I think But even if too. they weren't, you know what? I've opened up some space for something else and maybe I'll That's try fun. a butterfly bush at some Sometimes point. Sometimes when things die, it's like, yeah, more space to exactly. new things. Man, I'm really loving these white alliums. They're gorgeous. Pretty. What type of hanoki is this? This is, hanokis are one of my favorite conifers. I can't remember exactly right now. It's beautiful. The shape of them, the uh, structure of the foliage, how it's like so open. Mm -hmm. I really love it. Me too. I really love it. Your lavender. This is blonde. A variegated platinum. One. It's called platinum blonde. Oh, but it yep, had a lot yes. of dieback. I've got to trim that back. So. That is fun. Yeah. Yeah. My um, lavender. They say that lavender can get woody. Um, I have Munstead. I find that it does really well in our area, and I cut it all back. And mine doesn't usually get too. Woody. And do you cut it back in the fall or in the spring? Spring. I actually just did it a couple of weeks ago. I cut it all the way back, and I gave it a little bit of plant tone, and okay. it's already sprouting. Oh, new, good. New I did mostly everything in the spring as well. But Laura from Garden Answer was talking about trimming it back in the fall. Uh huh. Do you had a special reason for it? I don't remember why. I, but... Yeah, I don't. I, I don't recall watching that And I'm going to send you episode, a photo but... of this area right here in the summer. This is one of my favorite uh, photos of the garden. All the cone flowers with yeah. the butterfly bush. And... and you have a bunch of different color cone flowers, I right? Do. You have the it's... Cheyenne Spirit yes. and a few different ones. It's like, when I planted this, I did this in rainbow order. So I had like red, orange, and the yellow. And then this was like the Pink. blue and purple. And I had it in a special order. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, it was like my rainbow garden. I love that. This, um, right here, this is the stone crop Angelina. Yeah, my Angelina. So there's... So yours looks beautiful. Over there in your dry creek bed, you have a gorgeous stand of it. And I had gotten this question before in a recent video that I did. There are two types of Angelina. Well, there's a two types of sedum. There's the annual variety that Proven Winter sells, which is the, um, I think it's called coral sedum. Oh. I know what you're Lemon talking about. I had no luck with that. I planted this no, entire because thing. No, it's not hardy for this us. This entire thing. I spent, That's an annual. I spent like $200 I and know. I had little pots. I spent all the time See that? and it completely died back. But the Angelina is what works here. Exactly. So Angelina, I find in our zone, we're in six, seven, do really good as a perennial and they spread as a beautiful ground cover. Look at this gorgeous yellow color. But the uh, annual variety, no bueno, it does not come right, back for us. Right. This yeah. is, so we're going to go ahead and check out the backyard now. Just wait until you see this wall of trees, evergreens that Antoinette has. Look at this. Isn't this a sight? These are forever goldies. They're gorgeous. I have two, one on either side of one of our front walls, like our stone mm -hmm. bump outs on our house. I didn't realize that they're going to get this girthy yes. at the bottom, but it's gorgeous. They like a lot of moisture. I find that the more we water them, the better they do. Beautiful. And so different versus you know, the traditional yes. wall of green arborvitae. I absolutely love do. them. I did have a, a neighbor, I, I was kind of turned off by her comment, but she was like, oh, were those sick? I noticed that they were like bright yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're just not a, a, gar a plant yeah, person that's then. Because that kind of these are like stunning. I love that. They're gorgeous. The yellow. And, and now the birds are starting to use them. So if you count, tree number seven has a little nest with two little song sparrow eggs in them. Oh, that's so fun. We'll have to check mm -hmm. if we can find the nest. Your, this is your other, this is this your is my, third? My third orium. Gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. It's Definitely funny. This is one. like a shade area, yet the very top over here will get a little bit of burn in the summer. So they okay. are, they're pretty sensitive. Out of all the maples I have, this one's pretty sensitive. So I've got to keep it watered. And another beautiful, healthy rose. I think yeah. that you are, you have a really good thumb for roses. You are a rosarian, my friend. Look at this. Well, you think, but I have a list of, you know, half are doing well and half have died. <laughs> Which one is this one? This is Zephyrine Drowin. Oh, so this is the thornless Thornless. One. And so it's thornless on purpose here because my kids come through here and there's 
a um, bleeding heart back there and their little rock collection back there. That's fun. So, oh yeah, so definitely thornless with the kids around. Um, it, it looks so healthy and so beautiful, all your foliage. I'm, you know, I'm surprised. I actually just read that this one is disease prone. I read about that. Oh, don't so, tell me that because I, I planted one up my shed at the corner of my shed last year and it looks good right now, but I don't want to do it. This plant has been it. around for, I forgot what year, but it's like maybe 1800 or 1700s. It's oh, just so been around it's really for so old long. One. It's really old. So what type of tree is this? So this is a special um, urban apple. It's like a apple that stays very columnar and tall. You can see there's already apple buds on it. This is my middle child's apple tree and then my older daughter has an, an apple tree here. This is another um, another really, really skinny apple tree. And in the photo, it looks just like a pole with apples on each side. Now I noticed that your forever goldie arborvitaes start large and then get smaller. Is it because you planted them at different times or did you? So have it's an because issue with this um, tree kind of dries out the area. Okay. But yes, so, these yeah, two did did die, and we did have to replace these. But the, actually, the reason they died is my dogs keep peeing on them. <laughs> they won't stop peeing on <laughs> yep, them. Yep, you got it. You got, got pets. This, you got to live with that. We got little fence. Stuff. They still will hop it sometimes, but the fence yeah. has helped, and these are doing okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah. they look like they're yeah. healthy. Yeah, but now. these ones are the same. We got at the same time as all the other tall ones. So I really think this tree just takes a lot of moisture. It does. I bet shade. you because these roots look how old and wide it is and mm -hmm. big. It could be that all of these roots come this way. And so there's a lot of root competition mm -hmm. and they're competing for nutrients and water, right? So I just keep watering them. Oh, so this is what you said, that you added some fabric in your vegetable yeah, garden. Yeah, I thought it looked really weird. We tried it like three years ago and thought it was kind of strange, but it saved me so much time weeding. And it adds, somehow it adds maybe some heat or something, but the plants oh, yeah. love it and they do well. And we have a lot of That's zucchini awesome. and stuff. So you didn't plant this bed yet, you planted that bed. Yes, yeah, so we have like zucchini over there and tomatoes and stuff. But over here for this year, we're doing um, zinnias for my sister's wedding and dahlias. So fun. I'm so excited my husband's letting me do flowers here because usually this is like, that's his type of gardening. He loves vegetable, vegetable gardening. Vegetable gardening, yeah. So I'm really excited to have some flowers. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I see you have a couple more clematis. I yeah. love how like you have this repeating theme of pink clematis. Yes. They would be one of my favorites too. If, what do you have growing up there? Are those berries? So those are raspberries. Yeah. The red ones. And then over there we have some golden raspberries. Oh, is it the Anne and the, the fall gold? The Anne, yes. So I bought some because you told okay. me about them and I'm so excited. We prefer the Anne. Anne is the best variety the Anne for us. is a golden berry. We and they're that. long fruiting, right? Oh, do you yes, get two crops? long fruiting. It's just fruits from maybe, I don't know if it's June or July that it starts, but it goes all the way until frost. Awesome. I'm excited. Awesome. I think I should get berries this year because I planted them last year, so bare good. root. So maybe I'll get some this year. They're easy to grow. Yeah. It's just in March, you have to do like a big cut down where you cut down all the spent canes that mm -hmm. made berries the last year. So it's like a big cool. job to tie them and cut them. But And they're prickly. But then they're, yeah. But then they're easy. <laughs> yeah. Your girls like them. They love them. Yeah. Garden snacks are fun. Cherry tomatoes, berries. I'm also trying, um, we have the last row, the third row is uh, blueberries. I snuck oh. in some honeyberries. They're like an elongated blueberry looking fruit cool. that they're like from Canada. And so they're very, very cold hardy. That's fun. And I love how you did this. Um, is this these trellises for your berries? Are yeah. these blackberries or just raspberries as well? These are raspberries and we do have some blackberries on the ends here. Yeah, the thornless ones, yes. right? Yeah. I had asked you if you had a cutting or a piece yes, that you I could share with for me. You. Because I lost my uh, thornless blackberry and I love blackberries. Beautiful, look how many buds you have. This is gonna be a beautiful show of fruit here mm -hmm. pretty soon. Gorgeous. My kids have I, a little mud kitchen over here that they play in. Oh, that's in. fun. Yeah, they love that. We used to make mud pies all the time when we were kids. Oh, well, my grandmother used to give us the empty like butter containers or you know, Tupperware. Yeah. And we would put like leaves and dirt and exactly. water. Exactly, we do that all day. <laughs> so fun, right? This is, what kind of? This is a summer delight. Oh, pretty. It almost know, looks sorry. like a waterfall. Sorry, spring delight. Spring delight. Yes, it's really pretty in the spring and then it turns green. We made the mistake of putting this one in full sun last year and it completely mm -hmm. fried. I thought it, it was dead, but keeping it in the shade now. Yes, it's pretty. Potted maples, you have to be careful with the sun. It has a pretty green color with like almost like a pink edging. Yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. I love this fall right here. Mm -hmm. So pretty in your sensitive fern. and Oh, a, a white bleeding heart. Albo? Alba? Alba. Alba. My, um, I started white from bare root. It's not up yet. I like them a lot. I thought I would prefer the pink, but I actually like the white, white yeah. too. My pink bloom first and then the white. Interesting. I guess, yeah. I guess mine too. So the foliage is up, but I haven't gotten the blooms. I don't know if it'll bloom yet because mm. it's only second year from bare root, but we'll see. Beautiful uh, shade. This is a shade garden? Yes, this is north facing. This is the shadiest bed that I have. So you have some hosta, some lamium. What is that in the back? A still bee. Oh, a still bee, yeah. A Fern, still bee. Lungwort. And this Japanese maple is Kara Ora Nishiki. It's got a lot of pink. Oh, wow. So Look pretty. at how pink this is. Really dainty really special. foliage. 
beautiful. Really pretty. What what is is it special because of the gorgeous foliage? Yes, but also because it's just a rare find. You don't really find those around here. Cool. If you want to buy one, you can't really just get one locally. You've got to go online. Yeah, and research it. Yeah. And you still have some forget-me-nots, right? Is that what that is? Brown error. Brown I error. lost I lost my brown errors. Um, I had one planted under a tree, too much root competition, not enough moisture. And actually the other three that I bought last year, I also planted under my Katsura Japanese maple. And um, because we had that drought, really hot summer, I don't think I watered them quite enough and they didn't return this year. But I love them so much that I will replace them again. I'm just gonna wait for my trees to grow mm -hmm. a little bit more shade before I do that. This is Koto no Ito, the harp, oh. harp spring, sorry, harp string Japanese maple. Again, a different foliage. Remember I told you I don't like these really thin leaf maples? I don't, I don't like this one up close, but from far, it but, has quite yes, an effect. Yes, because it has a very airy look to it. So it's, what I was gonna say is that I think they're growing on me a bit more. Mm -hmm. This one's really cool. The foliage is like almost like crinkly. This is the Shishi Gashira lion's head maple. Yes. The li yeah, lion's head or lion's mane. I one of them. Lion's head. Lion's head. I've got cool. a little blue parakeet buried under there. Oh, fun. yeah, a little parakeet so I had for ten years. Tree. Yes, so yeah. special. Beautiful. Yeah, he was like my little lion, so it's perfect for him. Oh, that's awesome. Th this one is really quite cool, actually. I love it. I saw one in in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And it got really tall. I was surprised how big, because it's supposed to be a very slow grower. Yeah. But they can get really big with time, uh -huh. which is good though. It'll give us some privacy. Yeah. Right. I kind of like how on our patio we have some short trees and some taller ones. You really do. It's nice to be able to see the, the kids on the swing set, but also have some privacy too. That's right. That's awesome. And what a gorgeous grow. You, I love that you, one. You, you grow them pretty well. Look at you. I have a few that are small that you haven't noticed because they're so small. <laughs> Well, we, all of mine are small and, um, you know, not much to write home about. What kind of, is this a different type of fern? Yes. What is this one? I can't remember right now. You know, I planted... It's from Walmart, I think. The bagged is one it? Walmart. Yeah. Oh, for, oh, the bagged one. The bagged one. It's not Walmart. an ostrich fern. A Tennessee fern? They have the ostrich, the Tennessee, and the um, Christmas fern. Does that make sense? Or yeah, cinnamon fern? Yeah, it's not fern? the Christmas one. Oh, it might be the cinnamon fern. Does it get these little brown things that come up? No, the sensitive one does. But what it is, is it has little cinnamon... Usually it has little hairs on the bottom. Cool. That maybe gives it its cinnamon it's got name. It's nice texture though. And then you have another cut lace or lace leaf Japanese maple here. Yes, this is from Aldi's, this little one here. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Again, the bargain trees, yep. still in the show. Frugal, frugal. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes you have sometimes, to splurge sometimes on something Sometimes you can. Right. Save your money for the really fancy ones. And your sister, and then you can buy like the bargain ones mm -hmm. that sometimes shine like this. Sister Ghost. Yep. Yes, I have one too. The spring color on this is amazing. Yes, it the almost yellow. like glows, I guess right? My spring color is like done now. No, this actually still looks like spring color. Kind of. Mine was a lot more. It was a lot more yellow a couple weeks ago. It's beautiful. It almost has like a bit of a white coloring. Yeah, it does right now. It's beautiful. It's usually not this it's white. It's also got that reticulation because it's part of that ghost series. Yeah, it's so pretty. Really gorgeous. And what is this pretty um, evergreen this is shrub? Sea urchin. Sea urchin. I think he's even prettier when he doesn't have his candles in the spring. Oh yeah, this is the spring candle growth, right? Yeah. So every year I go through and I have to um, in the fall kind of put my hand through and get out all the dead um, yes. pine needles just to give it some more airflow, and it does really well. Awesome. I find um, actually George started doing that. He started noticing some of the um, evergreens when they get all of that brown stuff mm -hmm. inside. If he goes through and he kind yeah, of just shakes shake it, it off in the spring, they grow amazing. Mm -hmm. And they you can um, so keep these growth. smaller by I guess cutting the candles, yes. which I have never done yet. Yes, I, I have heard that. It's Even time like for the me to mugle, um, The dwarf mugle pines. pines. Yes, mm -hmm. I've heard that. This is another little giant um, Anna's magic ball back here. Awesome. I love the sphere shape that you have going mm -hmm. on here. You're kind of repeating that now, pattern. Now this was a coral bark maple and as we discussed they're really disease um, prone. This oh. one has a disease called nectaria, uh, canker, canker nectaria. So you'll see little orange little dots here. And I read that even if you dig up the tree the bacteria might be in, in the, the soil. soil. So oh. I left it and I planted a clematis at the base. It's called roguchi. So we'll see if this will grow. Oh, was, that's a pretty was, one. That almost looks like the Stand By Me clematis, the shape of the bell it's flower. It's different for me because it's the blue one. I usually plant, you know, pink and purple ones. Yeah, that's fun. Th this uh, this is a really big euonymus. Yes, we and have you bird nesting in here too. Do, the, do you? And that little, a lot of birds. That little um, yellow, what do you call it, reversion? Mm -hmm. I love it. I keep it there. I love the yellow. I like it too. I would probably cut the green, but I would leave the yellow because that mm -hmm. is awesome. This dead coral bark, I'm debating actually painting it, making it do a cool art project. Um, yeah, this could Or just having the clematis I, or both, yeah, I don't really know. I haven't decided a, yet, so. A it could become a, a clematis trellis. Look at this. 
It's like those green This stalks. is a strawberry planter, and when I bought this uh, like four years ago, I tried flowers, I tried nasturtiums, and it never seems to be enough soil for anything to have luck. So I'm hoping the strawberries will work. Yeah. Mm. This is a pretty area too. And is that a um, Godzilla fern or is that the Japanese it's painted Japanese ferns? Japanese painted fern. Oh, you have some right there I too. I have one wow. Those here. are pretty. Mine um, are in a little bit too much sun right now, so they get a little sun bleach. That's what I'm thinking of this one. I'm thinking, debating moving it, but I like having the two. Yeah, I, I like when you repeat like flanking mm -hmm. walkways and patios with the same plants. I think it looks really pretty. And these lilies are going to be spectacular. What color are they? They're like a peach. Peach? Ooh, I have a, a couple of peach ones. The um, salmon star. It's a oh, really pretty one. I think this might actually be that one too. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah it's we really have a lot pretty. of the same plants. Yes. We have similar taste mm -hmm. in plants. This whole wall, I'm hoping, will be covered with clematis. Yes. And even the, the fence over there with the garden, I'm hoping I planted a lot of clematis that I uh -huh. want all my fences to be flower covered. I think that's awesome. Either climbing roses or clematis, mm -hmm. which you're on your way because you have a ton of clematis. I think yes. I've counted, I lost count. You have a ton of them. Um, is this Rudebecchia? Rudebecchia yes. Here? Yep. Black eyed pretty. Susan. Yeah. Pretty later summer flower. Mm. Really pretty. This is beautiful, Antoinette. Thank you so much for sharing your garden. Yeah, no problem. I'm really happy you guys came over. Yeah. As we near the end of the tour of Antoinette's garden, I'd like to ask her two questions. And one of them being, Antoinette, what is your favorite thing about your garden, whether it be a tree or a plant um, that you really enjoy? I guess I would say the oriums, because I have three of these Me and too. I don't have to prune these. They don't grow too much. So they're just easy, low maintenance. I have them in enough shade where they don't, they don't need anything. They um, are beautiful. They don't get too burnt. Maybe a little crisp up here, but... Um, Where the sun reaches. Yeah, they're so low maintenance. All the and if you had one thing, one regret, or something you don't like about gardening, could you share that with us? The only regret thing is just that I have a lot of um, non-native species, and I realize how important they are. Yeah. So getting more native species. Um, but all the mistakes that I make, um, I don't regret them. And a lot of times I'll plant certain plants that spread too much, that I change my mind about, and I'm busy for a whole year, even sometimes two or three years, just pulling it out, pulling it out. But I, I love that. I learned from that, and that's what I like about gardening. Yeah, we're always getting learning. to know the plants and learning. For sure, I agree. Well, I think that we've had a beautiful evening. Thank you for spending your time with me. I've really enjoyed looking at your beautiful garden. It's so nice to have you guys over. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Thank you so much. And to all of you, I really hope that you've enjoyed this tour of Antoinette's beautiful um, 0.26 acre garden. So yes. a small garden, but packed with beauty. So thank you so much for spending your time with us, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.